Hello, wonderful interpreters, and thank you again for tuning in. Our union meeting in the Tri-Cities area was very successful last week, and we had a lot of fun interacting with interpreters out there. We're going to have all of those details and reactions in another upcoming video update. In this video, however, I want to talk to you about a bill introduced into the Senate by Senator Curtis King from Yakima, which has a companion bill introduced in the House of Representatives. Both of these bills will allow medical providers to use independent interpreters to cover for no-shows and cancellations from the scheduling system, regardless of which one of these bills becomes law. I already had the opportunity to testify in favor of one of these bills and I have all of the details so let's get started. Senate Bill 5808 is sponsored by Senator King and Senator Kaiser as you can see here and if you read below the sponsors you can see that it does have a companion bill as well which is House Bill 2004. As we have shared before, Senator King assisted us in making LNI accountable back in 2020 by modifying the amendments that we had proposed back then and requiring LNI to submit a report on their implementation to the legislature by December 2020. We also have shared this report before in which LNI admitted that in fact they had three options for their implementation, including a dual system, but chose the scheduling system as their primary option to distribute appointments. Now back to the present day, this is Senate Bill 5808, which was read for the first time on January 11th last month. This bill is only three pages long, by the way, and very straightforward. Please feel free to pause this video at any time in order to read the information that you see on the screen. You can see here that this is relating to providing spoken language interpreters for medical appointments when the original spoken language interpreter fails to appear. Now the underlying text starting on line 3 is what we're going to focus on for now. It says right here that if a spoken language interpreter assigned by a contractor fails to appear for a scheduled appointment, you know, the contractor in the LNI system is interpreting works, it says that then the medical provider may provide its own interpreter and be reimbursed or paid by the relevant state agency, you know, meaning LNI, at the same rate as the contractor who assigned the interpreter who didn't show up or failed to appear, as it says right here. Now, we have kept in touch with Senator King since 2020, and he knows that there's been a lot of issues with this implementation, including many no-shows and cancellations since Interpreting Works took over. Several medical providers in his area have also reached out to him about this, and that's the reason for this law. However, we requested a meeting with Senator King again to offer our support but also to propose an amendment. You see, we cannot have uncertified interpreters covering these no-shows and we don't want to wait for medical providers to get paid by LNI to then receive payment from them. We want to bill and get paid directly by LNI for these no-shows. You see, going back to the bill, the law says here that LNI may also pay interpreters directly for walk-in, urgent care, and emergency appointments, as you can see here, starting on line 7. So we proposed an amendment here to specify and ensure that we also get paid when covering no-shows and cancellations directly from LNI if the bill from Senator King becomes law. Senator King agreed to modify his bill with our proposed amendment, as you can see by reading this email, and we emailed him the text to be added as agreed. Follow the arrow here to see the underlined bolded text that fixes the language so that we can get paid directly when the medical provider chooses his own interpreter, as it says in subsection 7, meaning when there is a no-show from interpreting works. Now, the bill from Senator King has not had a public hearing scheduled yet so that we can testify, but the companion bill did get a hearing. That's House Bill 2004, introduced by Representative Jeremy Defoe, also from the Yakima area, who's been working with Senator King on this issue. Here you can see that Representative Defoe introduced this bill, and it actually got a public hearing on January 27th, last Thursday at 10 a.m. Now, his bill is identical to the bill from Senator King on purpose, since they have been working together on this. I also emailed our same proposed amendment to Representative Defoe 
and his bill is the one advancing at this time. I actually signed in to testify in support of this bill, as you can see here, and was able to see who signed in as well. Now, a lot of people signed in to either testify or to submit their testimony in writing for this bill, including several organizations. By the way, only people from Wolfsey testified against this bill. Now, look at all the reputable organizations testifying in favor of this bill, including the Patient Coalition of Washington, among others, in contrast, there was only two people from Wolfsey testifying against it and sticking out like a sore thumb. Now, we testified as a panel, as you see here. You can see Tammy Fallon from LNI and Dennis Eagle from Wolfsey. So we went live, I think it was in April. Since that time, there have been requests for about 140,000 um, interpreter appointments, and that's statewide. Of those, uh, about 3,000, not quite 3,000, went unfilled uh, because of either late cancellations or no-shows. Now, I want you to listen to my testimony in which I offered a very simple solution to this problem on behalf of Washington Interpreters. Juan and then Dennis. Oh, you're on mute. Juan. Good morning, Madam Chairs. Members of the committee, my name is Juan Blois. <clears throat> I am a certified uh, interpreter here in Washington, and I work covering appointments for LNI. Now, I am also an injured worker, ex injured worker, should I say. I understand the complexities of the LNI system when it comes uh, for patients, to injure, uh, for injured workers to be assisted. I was also testifying back in 2008 when legislation required the Department of Labor and Industries to make changes to their system. What I recall was being instrumental to uh, introduce amendments that would give LNI choices for this implementation, not only using their platform, but using individual interpreters that um, had already accounts with the, departments, uh, the Department of Labor and Industries to build directly. So a lot has changed since then. The new online platform is uh, the primary option for medical providers to procure interpreters. They are only allowed to use their own interpreter or to reach out to another individual provider for urgent care, emergency, and walk-in situations. So medical providers struggle when there is a no-show. I'm hearing staggering numbers right here, 3,000 no-shows, 2,500 late cancellations. Um, in these instances, medical providers have uh, a lot of struggles uh, with their, within their own staff uh, that have scattered resources to find these interpreters. What this bill is doing, which I fully support uh, on behalf of Washington interpreters, we are seeking to represent uh, LNI interpreters. What this bill will do is give medical providers uh, the choice to find their own interpreter, not necessarily through language agencies. Individual interpreters still have individual provider accounts which they can use to build directly, confirming their certification because they are already providers within the system. So I think this is a fantastic piece of legislation. The interpreting work system that LNI uses is good, but it's not perfect. They have had a lot of delayed payments and allowing providers to find quick interpreters uh, to help these patients will solve that problem and allowing independent interpreters to build directly and get reimbursed for those services which the policy already exists within the LNI system. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Representative Abar had a question. Representative Abar. Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, Juan, so, so bottom line is you're telling me if this bill passes that I don't have to go to my mom's medical appointments all the time and so I'm gonna lose my job because that's what happens in the real world is that guys like me that my mom speaks only Spanish doesn't understand what the doctor is saying and so we show up my brothers my sisters show up with my mom to interpret for her what the doctor's saying so this bill is going to make that easier because you're going to give us more interpreters for uh, during those examinations and things absolutely Absolutely, it's going to provide more options for medical providers not to be tied to only the, the, uh, the interpreters um, procured through the scheduling system, which are great, but when they don't show up and medical providers are shackled to only use independent interpreters for emergency situations uh, that are not completely defined, we do have a problem. So we wanna have these qualified interpreters that have been working in the LNI system for years 
until back in 2018 to still have that same opportunity. Only when that interpreter from the scheduling system doesn't show up for these medical providers to find quick access and help for these patients. So they don't have to wait. I was a, I'm an ex injured worker. And although I didn't need interpretation services, I know that these medical officers, they, they struggle with their staff and resources to quickly help the people they have there. So patients can't be waiting for an interpreter that didn't show up that the department shackles the provider because they can't use their own interpreter only for limited situations. And I think that since these interpreters have already an established provider account with NNI, they have been confirmed, they are DSHS certified or nationally certified, or whatever certification they have has been already confirmed. This is about helping patients get quick access to the language needs they need to be met. Now you've heard it, you see that the solution is simple. We need to be able to cover these no-shows and cancellations and get paid directly by LNI, so we need your help. Please email these House representatives that you see on the screen and ask them to amend House Bill 2004 with the language proposed by Washington interpreters in order to allow independent interpreters to bill and get paid by LNI directly whenever requested from medical providers to cover no-shows and cancellations from the scheduling system. Also, don't forget to email or call your local representatives and ask them to support House Bill 2004. This will only take you a couple of minutes and it will help a lot to advance this bill. Use this link here to find House representatives by county as well. All these links will be provided in the description box of this video. In closing, I would like to remind you that it is very important for all of us to become involved. I know that the election is coming soon, but we cannot stop fighting for what's right. So please call your local representatives, talk to medical providers in your area, share this information so that they can also testify with us when the hearings come again. You see, WOFSI leaders tremble with fear when all of us become involved. But you know what? They're counting on you to feel defeated so you just give up. They want you to get used to not having enough hours as an interpreter, to get your payments delayed for months, to be mistreated by this company, and to also get a lot of appointment offers very far from your location when they have convinced LNI already to take away our mileage. So please do not give them the satisfaction. Please get involved attend our union meetings, come and share your ideas and concerns with us, and be ready to vote. You're gonna speak with your vote when the election comes so that we can get rid of Wolfsey, have a dual system, have enough appointments for everyone, get our mileage back, and improve our working conditions without them. We will overcome this together. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel in order to keep on getting more relevant information for our interpreting community. See you in the next video. Do not lose hope. And as always, God bless.